move on and look at some of the other rugby that's going ahead. The next game, chronologically speaking, is Spain taking on Fiji. Yes. Um, now, this is obviously a, a, a Tier 2 clash, one that uh, you might know is going on. It is going to be broadcast by World Rugby. Um, this is in the uh, University Complex in Madrid. Um, it's obviously taking place on the Saturday. It's going to be a 3 o'clock kickoff our time or 4 o'clock local time in Spain. Um, and Jaco Piper is taking the game uh, with Chris Busby and uh, Ludovic Kier, uh on the sidelines with uh, Alan Falzone from Italy on uh, on, on TMO duty. Um, it's definitely a, like a, a, I was surprised even to see that this game was going ahead. I think it's Spain's first um, be it first game or, or game against their highest opposition since I think in this century. Wow. Highest ranked opposition. They really don't tend to get these games. Wow. And there the unfortunate go. shame of it is that um, they don't actually have a lot of their French-based players. I saw the, uh, Classic, the so Tier, tier yeah. 2 account was flagging this and saying it's kind of it's just a curiosity that the way the power dynamics work is that Georgia have actually worked themselves quite a, quite a friendly negotiation. Their players aren't playing in the Toco Tours this week despite the fact that they don't have a game. Yeah. Their players are training with them in Georgia whereas Spain have a game which is one of their biggest, um, sort of, or at least... Like their game against the best opposition they've played for forever, mm-hmm. and uh, they don't actually have most of the players. players. So, yeah, they don't. So they're missing a huge chunk of players for this game, and that obviously is is going to hamper them to some extent. True. Um, the two sides have met just once before. Um, back in nineteen ninety nine, it was a thirty nine to twenty victory for Fiji back then. There you go. And um, it is a good opportunity for for Los Leones. They come off a, a performance last week where they actually pushed Italy A all the way. There you that go. was an Italy A team that had um. Uh, some some like uh, like it was full of URC players. There it was go, just yeah. like the, the, the pro the, pro players anyway. Yeah, yeah, pro pro players, solid URC talent, and they they took a took an eight nil lead and then conceded thirteen points in about uh, ten minutes, and mm. then that was it. That was the only conceding conceding that they did in the game. They lost at thirteen eleven in the end. Tight one. That was a tight one. Yep. They didn't get concede any yellow cards. That they played they played a nice game. They scored a nice try with an attacking kick. Very good. Um, All of that yeah, is, yeah. is positive. They reports. still have some skills. Spain. They That's do. the thing. They, they are do. a skillful team at their best. That's true. Yeah. Um, well, we sure we know that all Spaniards can play football, so you know yeah. <laughs> it's pretty much true. So uh, yeah, no, we want to see them be a bit more skills based. And even before the start of the rugby cha- rugby Europe uh, Championship this year, they were saying they were going to be modeling themselves in Japan and being Europe's answer tier two, Europe's answer to Japan. That ended up being. Portugal as it turned out because they really instead of doing any of that they be, became just a very brutish very thuggish entity where things would go against them and then they compounded by like punching someone in the face um, yeah they you know, were giving away crazy cards yeah. like the kind that would make Lavanini blush yeah, it was just, like they yeah. were re- like they just lost the head to such an extent that you were kind of looking at the game going what is going on I, think, yeah. I can't remember who they were playing but one of the games it was they, Romanian it was Romanian. kick where, where yeah. the, ball, the ball was <laughs> hanging in the air and he creased yeah. the potential receiver and then there's like two more seconds of hang time before the ball comes down he's already broken like up two or three cards at once could have been given yeah. and then they like I was watching that game thinking they might have to call this off they literally might not have enough players because they could all go like yeah. it was it was Indeed. bizarre to see and I hope that they've rectified some of that and have gone back to just playing rugby and, and bringing a bit of discipline to proceedings sure um on the other side of the coin, obviously Fiji. We all love to watch Fiji. They're Their box, box office box offices have yeah. come to flying Fijians against um, Los Leones. Yeah, yeah. They have a, a temporary coaching staff that they've put in for these autumn international fixtures. Um, Vern Ver- Cotter didn't travel. He didn't. He he is saying he's in contact with them. Like he's doing Skype, Skype stuff. And, Skype half route half time chats. Yeah, re- he's he's remotely involved. I'll say that anyway in communicating with the coaches. But um, as it is. Um, former Wales international Gareth Barber is taking or Gareth Baber is taking the team now he's the guy who um, was coaching the sevens team at the Olympics to, to victory um, this year so he has some pedigree with the Fijians already yeah he they'll, listen, they'll listen to him yeah um, makes sense and then obviously he's going to be assisted by a few more 15s experts Rory Best including Rory Best of, of, of our own land um, yeah. and then uh, ex-Scotland fly half Duncan Hodge and then Richie Gray is in as breakdown coach. Yeah, I think he is in um, there in the in their normal setup yes. as well. So that's a bit of continuity for them as well. But uh, yeah, quite a colourful coaching uh, ticket as well. But then similarly, players, uh, it's European-based players that that's they're right. utilising as well for the squad. 
and even at that a few of them are unavailable guys like Semi Radradra is, is unavailable for both He's Bristol and champ. for uh, for now Fiji Lavani Bhatia playing for La Rochelle ah, this week really yeah ten more top top guitars ah. ah. <laughs> uh, yeah release your Fijians so I can watch them play mind you they, they probably don't need them this week no, but yeah. hopefully they get them for the weeks to come there have uh, games against Wales and Georgia coming up yes, and I'm looking forward to nice those to have games. Bhatia locking down the defence for them if possible yeah um, yeah um, oh for real they could get on, on the evidence of what we saw last week they could give Wales a real game um, they've lost um, uh, Priscilliato to injury as well Johnny Dyer is also out um, but Rituni Roella comes in as a huge lock option and they still have plenty of talent they in the do. squad still have um, Nakarawa in there as well don't they available uh, yes this, he's, this he's, he's starting uh, at number 6 um, yeah, and Ben Volavola there as well Perpignan now and former Racing now Perpignan 10 and, and Stalwart in, in this team as well so there is a bit of continuity from what we saw in summer uh, they obviously had the two games against the All Blacks in summer that was kind of treated as a why are we why are we making these games thing in the reaction to it but they've aged pretty well oh <laughs> god I, I didn't think that at all no, I didn't. Games. they were they frustrated the all they did and they, they defended really them physical. better than most yeah. this year yeah, um, absolutely so. they were they're they're a pro- Fiji are a proper team and I think they're probably even without Vern Cotter and some of their Southern Hemisphere players I think they're going to show it this autumn true um, just looking at the game first of all from the point of view of Spain who obviously have nothing to lose coming into this one they gave a good account of themselves against Italy A but you know the real, the real, Italy, the real, yeah. the real Italy would be hammered by Fiji probably if they met next week. So I mean, it's it's quite a bit of stepping up. But they have some good players. They need to keep their composure and play a play a solid skills based game. And I think this will be a good test for them to do that. Sure. I do like their centers, Kimeno and and Stewart, who last week were very very good. Yeah, lovely lovely touch on both of them. They play mm-hmm. they play like a nice offensive kicking game. They like to pin teams back. That's a good strategy against yeah, Fiji. Against Fiji for um, sure. If you can get a few 50-22s and dial in a line out more you could be in business for for a try or two and, yeah. and maybe even a competitive game from there um, and yeah. take it one step at a time but yeah they, they need to play their own game be solid like that a few points of difference including the kicking game they should be fancying their ability to to more than mix it with Fiji but it obviously without being too loose because loose kicks will be punished by transition replay as well yeah. and then once one or two scores go or one or two things go against them that's when you'd like to see the lead the core leadership group keep the temperatures that's it. That's, in check. I think that's the challenge yeah. obviously they've got the big game next week against Russia which colours all of this because that yeah. is that is a last chance has World Cup qualification was, state if, stuff. if they lose it I'm ready to put a I'm ready to full say full time yeah. you know try again in four years if they lose it I think they're done yeah. re- realistically if not if, mathematically then pro- just yeah, probably just they, they probably in all probability yeah. when you're starting to have, have, have when you're starting to have to put wins against Georgia in your yeah, column yeah. As, a, as a team like uh, Spain it, yeah. it's not going to happen but if they win next week they're kind of back on the horse and it's a, it's a long process and they've still got all of next year's competition and who knows but like it, I think the real test is that they're not going to win this game. They're going to be blown away. Fiji are better athletes, crazy strong guys, ferocious in the tackle. Top level rugby players. Yeah, it's going to be well, re- yeah. guys who excel in their clubs at top couture's and, uh, and, and premiership, and, premiership and, and Heineken level. Cup level. Yeah, like yeah. there's just and these guys not only feature, they excel and and for all of these teams. It's gonna. It's a scary prospect for them, no doubt about it. But what's on them is whether they can keep their composure in the face of a team that is aggressive and physical, and still get some stings off. Stick to their task. Try and probe. With the uh, like the quality of the kicking game is going to be so important. But they have some of the cleanest passing uh, you'll see at tier two in 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 Europe anyway. Apart from Portugal, probably they have the cleanest passing. They do pass the ball well. Yeah. They link up. They like to run. I would like. I'd like to see them try and go toe to toe in a shootout. It's a tough defense to go against, but Fiji do leave some spaces. They rush yeah. out aggressively. The best way to defend um, them is to have the ball in your own hands. Yeah, <laughs> you know, that's like true. This, yeah. just, just hold the ball for a while and maybe try and find a score or two yourselves. You know, that's definitely definitely an mo for them. They will have to be dialed in at set piece because like Fiji people people sleep on their set piece, but they have some big units and mm. like they will fancy it as well, both at scrum and line and line out. Under Vern Cotter in general, they've improved in those areas and they've emphasized yeah. those. Areas areas a bit more so you can't be shocked when you know the ball gets nicked in your line out and you're like wait but Fiji don't normally compete or you get scrummed off the ball and be like oh I thought Fiji were not not a great scrummager 
not not a good way to thinking. They need to be dialed into trying to do their ta- stick to task, stay on point, lock down your set piece, win your own ball, yeah. and then try and use it. Try and try, work try and drag it in the dirt, into the dirt a little bit. Play a composed game and, and keep it tight as best you can for as long as you can, and maybe nick a couple of scores. Yeah, and stay stay focused on your task. That's the challenge for Spain. Um, um, for Fiji, the opposite. Try and break it all up. Yeah. Run around them. Um, basketball them. passes around the air, through them, around them, over them, under them. Doesn't matter. They yeah. have to find the space, find the tries. Um, yeah, try and try and hit the ground running here. They have a few good tests coming up. They have a um, game next week against Wales, which they will yeah, be targeting. That is exactly um, They true. had a good win a couple of years ago against France in the autumn series. Yeah. And they have a game coming up against Georgia as well, which will be in Georgia. And the Georgians are, are, are putting together, obviously, they have a better camp than they've ever had. And that, that has the potential to be as good a Tier 2 game as you'll ever see as it's far true. as standard. Yeah, very um, much so. And so they, they, they don't they want to do. lose that. No, they, they have they a good record they against have the good, Georgians. Good yeah. record. They, their most recent showing, which was a World Cup game, which was important because Georgia now have, to, have had to qualify for the World Cup, where Fiji have in third place. Very very important and they did win the race for that between yep. Fiji themselves and Uruguay one of despite their, their pants being pulled down yeah, in that game yes. um, that's that's a point of encouragement for Spain is that Uruguay game try and replicate yeah. that as best they can um, but I mean they're, they're getting ready for this Wales game and trying to trying to show the same sort of defensive cohesiveness we saw against the All Blacks as a first port of yeah. call and you talked about the set piece as well and then it's just about letting some of these players go to work um, I'm re- particularly looking forward to Tui Sova coming on off the oh. bench what a player he is what a kind um, of bring on yeah. bench know, it's course Spain it's cruel yeah, it, yeah. Is, it is very cruel but yeah. even guys like Naya Kalevo uh, Tui Suvu at fullback Wainakolo on the wing awesome. class player awesome Albert player. Tui Sui at number 8 he's had a great he's season so far well. really yeah a lot is on just the halfbacks to get these guys facilitate these guys and bring them invite them on to run onto it that's yeah. going to be the MO because they will run support lines they will look for offloads um, it'll be interesting to see who takes up the bodier role of leading the uh, line speed in defence they have been doing it from 12 will it remain from 12 or will they push it out it might I be not sure. Maybe, yeah. might be um, um, but yeah you'd like to see a bit of consistency which we have seen from them in the last couple of years more so they've, they've been a more consistent side in terms of what they're trying to do they've been better at set piece they've been better on defence and uh, yeah I think in this game they will just be better um, and that will probably tell I think they will likely be rewarded for just a gung-ho attempt to play rugby. They should just, yeah, yeah. just do what, like what the All Blacks rocked up to uh, to the US with in terms of just run it. Run yeah. it at them first and then maybe kick it if they stop you. Yeah. But don't kick it until they stop you. No, exactly like, right. Let's yeah, just yeah. see if, if Spain are here, here at all, all. Yeah. for the game. Yeah. Absolutely right. I don't know I would agree with that. And I'm just curious as well to see what the Gareth Baber, obviously seventh man, but him and Vern Cotter putting together the attack yeah. um, remotely. Like What what kind of shape do, are they going to bring? a set-piece strike move but in them, they, which is not normally yeah. their MO. But, no, but they uh, do have yeah. a competent 10 and at the top level they do need... To, like. They They'll do need, need to become more about working their athletes into space rather right. than getting them to do everything True. and make things happen from nothing. True. Actually work them into a bit of space. And Vola Vola is their man to do that. So he's out there today uh, or this weekend against Spain. That's definitely going to, be, going to be a point of emphasis that I'm going to be looking for. Is what yeah. do they do off set piece? What's the first phase, second phase? What are they trying to? How are they trying to unlock this defence, yeah. especially ahead of the game against Wales next week? Because... You know they, they they are going to come into that game hungry. They definitely they, will. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, they they fancy a few scalps in November, and they're very often right because you can catch some of these teams cold in November. And and Fiji, when, when you're cold against Fiji, they will make you look yeah. very very silly. And so, with all that said, how do you think this one goes? Well, it'll be a Fiji win. Um, yes, I, I don't would agree. I, I don't really know what to expect from Spain. And you know, I think in the early goings, Fiji will be a little disjointed. First game of the season vibes for them. I think. You know, obviously they didn't have a PNC. They haven't played since July, so I would think that you know, but maybe thirty minutes in, it might be a tight enough game. I think Spain might be able to hold it together for that long. Um, as a kind of a maybe a three all six three kind of a game, and then you know, as the game wears on, the pressure will tell. Fiji will start running up the scoreboard, and maybe Spain to grab a try. So something, something in the regions of thirty five or thirty five to eight, maybe, maybe final something score like that. Yeah. Okay. I would, yeah. Maybe even more. it could be fifty day. Like if, they, if Fiji that's where, really that's where my arrive, head's at. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, if Fiji um, do arrive to the to to the pitch, uh, then even Spain keeping it tight could look a little bit more like fourteen or eighteen three. Or, yeah, you know, and that's like yeah. before it blows out. Yeah, um, could end up happening that way. I like. I would hope to see more discipline from Spain. I would just. I'm looking forward to seeing whatever Fiji are bringing, and curious to a certain extent, but uh, yeah, confident that they have too much 
for Spain. Uh, but I'm glad that this fixture is happening. Uh, there's a lot made of like, why are we making l l these these tier one v tier two uh, kind of fixtures and whatnot? This isn't quite the same bracket, but it's like that little stat you gave about Spain. Just this is their top ranked opponent for this century. You need to remedy some of those anomalous stats. You need to give these guys. Exposure yeah, I'm excited. Stats. I mean, it's it's not quite the Autumn Nations Cup that we'd pictured, but it is uh, functioning as something of a festival of rugby this November, and I'm sure. definitely enjoying it happening. Yeah. Um, for all of these teams. Um, Thank you for tuning in to the Overlap Rugby podcast. If you enjoyed what you hear, please like and subscribe and uh, leave a comment down below as well. We enjoy hearing your opinions too. Thank you. <laughs>